Hello, I'm Nikki Tolliday. I direct the screening facility here at the Broad Institute. Finding a new drug isn't so much like looking for a needle in a haystack as it is like looking for a special piece of hay in a haystack. In other words, trying to find one molecule with special properties from among hundreds of thousands of possible molecules that do nothing, or at least don't do what you want. But what if you could take all the pieces of hay in your haystack and check them out one at a time till you came to the one with just the properties you wanted? Well, that's what this machine helps us do, for small molecules, not hay, in a process called high-throughput screening. High-throughput screening relies heavily on automation. The plates going into the machine have 384 wells in them, each containing a few drops of solution that contains living cells. It's in these cells that our molecules will be tested, a different molecule in each well. After they are prepared, the plates are put into an incubator where the cells will be allowed to acclimate to their environment, often overnight. The test molecules themselves come from what we call library plates, which we keep in freezers. Our collection is about 160,000 compounds right now, with several copies of each plate. We have descriptions of what those libraries are, so that when we sit down with a screener, we can say, I think you should do this set of plates. Each well has a number, so that we can keep track of what chemical has been added to it. This we do with an automated robot, transferring the chemicals from the library plate to the test plate on pins. Enough chemical sticks to each pin. We don't need pipettes. Then the plates go back into the incubator for 24 hours or so, waiting their turn to be screened. And that's where this machine comes in. It's essentially an automated microscope that peers into each of the 384 wells to find and take pictures of the cells it contains, usually a few thousand of them. The cells have been stained so that their nuclei show up as round blue blobs. The outer part of each cell, the cytoplasm, doesn't show up in this image, but the nuclei reveal where the cells are. In a typical experiment, the cells have also been stained to reveal if, and even where, the test molecule is interacting with a target in the cell. In this case, a green fluorescent marker is showing that a test molecule is active in the cytoplasm. The microscope only sees one color at a time, so by using software to look for cells where the green doesn't overlap the blue, we can tell that this particular molecule is active in the cytoplasm, but not in the nucleus, which is just the sort of molecule the investigator in this project was hoping to find. We use this automated microscope for many projects here at the Broad, but there are other screening platforms as well. One of the newest is called a small molecule microarray, which was actually developed by the Broad's Stuart Schreiber and his colleagues. Here's how it works. Using robots, we put up to 12,000 tiny spots of different small molecules, each spot the width of a human hair, onto slides like microscope slides. That's about 1,600 spots in every square centimeter. Then we can come in with a test protein and see if it binds to one of the 12,000 molecules on the slide. If one does, it lights up, and we immediately know that the test protein and the molecule on that particular spot interact in some way. Using technologies like these, we often screen up to 100,000 chemicals, checking to see if any one of them has an effect on the cells the scientist we're working with is looking for. We've not yet had anyone screen 100,000 and not find something. And that something, that small molecule, can be the starting point for a new understanding of a disease, and ultimately, if all goes well, to a new treatment.